Uh, this is Ken Schramm's Heart of Darkness. It's a rather hard mead to get. Mm-hmm. You know, the to only, say the least. <laughs> the, the only way you can get it is if you actually show up on release date, because other than that, they're pretty much gone. And they did a like a comeback tour kind of thing where you can tour their the orchards and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like a comeback like ACDC tour. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw Kid Tram on comeback tour <laughs> 2021. No, they, they 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 did tours or whatever. Like I, I really I really don't know what you see that. Like I really don't know what caused them to have like the tours, but uh-huh. one, one of the options was He's just up there shredding. <laughs> He's got the hair for it. <laughs> no offense, Ken. Yeah, no, man. I love the hair. You know, I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> working on your, <laughs> working on mine over here. But uh, they call it the Shram nowadays. Right? Do that. Yeah, just go to the barber shop. Say, yeah, give me the Shram, <laughs> the number six. <laughs> so, like, one of the options on there was, you know, no tour, just support. And so I was able to get this mead that was actually shipped to me. And I promised you two guys that if I ever got one. I would share it with you guys. As much as you guys rejected me actually sharing, <laughs> kind of, oh no, don't do it. Yes, you're gonna do it. <laughs> here, nice. you know, I'm a man of my word, so here we are, which is why we're here today. And well, I am very excited and grateful uh, to I'm, say the least. <laughs> my my bar is set very high. So is mine. So <laughs> my wife, she's like, you're gonna be very upset if you're drinking. You're like, I don't like it. <laughs> But everyone who's ever had it is like, this is actually... This is the guy with the pocket knife. I'll let you do the honors. <laughs> and then oh, afterward, we can peel some apples. Hey, I got medical tape, so if I cut myself, I'm fine. <laughs> smooth. <laughs> yeah, have a smooth ride. This is a pretty epic moment in history. I remember hearing about this when mm-hmm. I first started. Mead making? It was yeah. hard to which one of these is my clean glass? Is it? Yeah, oh, the yeah. one with the looks like the lip stain on it. Uh, beautiful. It's not a lip stain. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no, 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 it's a dishwasher like drying. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know if it was like an aesthetic no. thing. <laughs> like you no. chose these. No. Okay. Good to see all y'all. But by Ooh. the way, that is the plural of y'all. Y'alls. All y'all. That's all y'all. Here. All y'all is plural of y'all. This is. Okay, truth. so let's let's talk through it again for anybody who's just joined us. Okay, this is the heart of darkness. cherry raspberry black currant. Every- this is bottle number fifty out of six hundred. He's yeah. he's known for his uh, bombs, his mellow mel bombs yep. essentially, and like it's like a lot of people refer to him as like the godfather of mead making. Right, mm-hmm. he wrote the complete mead maker, yep. mm-hmm. the kind of his opus on. Home meat making. And won, he's won many awards. From what I understand, like his standard is it like twice as much fruit as normal, at least, if not yeah. more. So you're thinking, you know, if you're making most people use whatever, three pounds of fruit per gallon, he's using six to eight um, on average. Is this like a Which is why they're so expensive and why they're so hard to get. Is he one of the like Mazer Cup? Yeah. Like he started the Mazer Cup. He's yeah. one of the founders of the Mazer Cup. Cup Cup. Cup Cup Cup. cup. <laughs> yeah, love that Cup Cup. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> so, so this says the heart of darkness is perhaps the most highly sought after handcrafted honey wine in the world today. Humble brag. It, it really is. This melomel is crafted from Belgian dark tart cherries. Crandall and Consort Black Currants and Red Raspberries grown in Michigan by the Shram family for three generations. The Shram fam, as you're calling The Shram fam. I don't, don't want to be first. I don't know what it is. Exquisitely balanced this. with structure from both the tartness of the fruits and the sweetness provided by carefully selected honeys. What is the... 14%... Okay. Signed by him, by the way. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Uh, that is fun. That is fun. Definitely keeping the ball. So. Why yeah. does they be number seven? Batch, Batch number, number seven. Sorry. You think the so label will strip off pretty? So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought when I was ordering it. <laughs> Can you imagine? My, my understanding when I was ordering it, or when I bought it, uh, I thought it was On the ba- light market? Yeah. <laughs> Black number seven. <laughs> Using Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> Dogecoin, man. Come on. <laughs> to the moon! Doge, baby. <laughs> So when I bought it, my understanding was supposed to be batch number eight. At least that's okay. what I thought I read. And then I get this one, and I'm like, that's batch number seven, which is released in 2019. 
which means it was started in 2018. Ah. So 2018 to now, we're nearing the end of 2021. <laughs> you know, this this is almost. <laughs> so. All right. They're they're asking what the FG is, but I don't think we have no one ever to do a hydrometer reading. No. Um, one point one zero zero. Let's see. Arctic Bull says, "Sounds right, like it would be good. This. I hope it tastes great." Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. 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 Let's let's clink them glasses. <laughs> yeah. Numb them gums. <laughs> <laughs> the heart of darkness is best enjoyed with a giggle. <laughs> It's that good. is, it's good. Like it definitely clings to the mouth. Mm-hmm. Like it's stuck to my gums right now. Like yeah. I'm literally licking it off. Mm-hmm. You can get a lot of that tart, that? like the tart that side of a raspberry tart, and this of a I, blackberry. I, what I, is that I, the currants? I think it's the currants. Yeah. Because like that, the Discord mead that we did almost reminds me. Like not the. No, it doesn't have a medicinal. It reminds of this. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't have the medicinal part of it. <laughs> But like the tartness of that black currant that you did, uh huh. That's what it reminds yeah. me of. It's very good. It is very good. It is well balanced. The acidity to sweetness is really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does have I think the pro of using so much fruit is that you can circumvent using uh, adjuncts to like fill out body. Yeah. Like it's just automatically you've added so much fruit that it adds body to it. Because, like, that, that boysenberry melomo we had at the Meat Stampede, it yeah. was all juice. Or, no, wait, was it all juice? Yeah, I think it was a no water. It was no water. It was, like, I mean, it was jam, like jammy. It was big body. I mean, Jammy's just like, like you're talking about, like, you feel like you can't get it off your teeth. It just yeah, like, I'm stuck not, yeah. around. Like, just, like, let it hit your teeth and then close your mouth. Mm-hmm. And, like, lick your teeth after that. It's literally stuck to my gums in front of my teeth. I do. I do think that this is pretty high final gravity. We're yeah. Like, I, I, like for this, like, because you know, not to spoil your video coming out, but <laughs> I, do I'm, I'm pretty good at guessing. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm pretty good at guessing. I'd say this is probably closer to like 1070. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's high. It's high. It's good. Like it's not overly sweet. It's, it's definitely that's what rounded balances. and balanced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Balance is so important is because, like, you can have something that is obtrusively sweet and still make it yeah. taste good between acid balance and tannic yep. value and oaking and whatnot. So, yeah, I would say this is very well balanced. It's like Shram uses floor corks. Just saying. Shram, get on it, man. <laughs> That's it's 2021, bro. Oh, man. I'm saying I use, I use cork, too. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice cork. Yeah, it's it's very well balanced, and that's that's a thing that like I'm still a little bit learning, but it, people feel like oh, I mean just, I'm not gonna argue with you. People what? feel like you can't make a mead too sweet, like like hmm. like you gotta like sweetness isn't gonna balance acid, but the reason this is so well balanced is because the acid is stupid high, but the sweetness is high enough to kind of level out that yeah that balance. My balance uh, that chocolate bullshit Asher Glen, 1038. Yeah, I believe it. So I think the yeah. highest the highest I've done so created today was one they had today, and I'll have you taste after this, is was 1050. And it mm-hmm. does not taste like 1050. No, no not at all. Not. Like, I was surprised when mm-hmm. you're like... But it is a total, uh, you know, <laughs> conjunction between acidity and sweetness, like yep. we were just talking about. Yep. This is fantastic. Oh, this is very good. Very good. So. very good. The legs on it, too. Oh, yeah. It just... Uh-huh. I mean, it coats the glass. This really makes me want yeah. to... I don't think it's Make good. a... Either no water brew like this, mm-hmm. or just use twice to two and a half times the amount of fruit recommended. What I have noticed, though, I don't think you'll ever see something as notable as this that comes from pears or apples mm-hmm. or light fruit. It is always dark fruit. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it has to be something of a, probably a berry essence. And so, I have a no water peach that is aging right now. I, I haven't tasted it, so I, I have no idea. <laughs> but it would be a good litmus test for your, your theory here. 
of I, I'm very curious to see what your results are. Started out at six gallons, and once I racked it off, it was three gallons because of how much loss <laughs> oh, man. there was. Did you use skins? Bowl. Yeah, yeah. All I did was Cause, skins. Because skins from peaches can actually add a lot of like tannin value. Because mm-hmm. uh, this is when I, I use skins and all. Um, and I, this, like, this peach is actually like 10, 15, 10, 20 final gravity just to bring the juiciness of the peach yeah. back through. But yeah. the skins, I think, help round the entire mm-hmm. juicy peachness of Here's it. Here's a great point someone asked Are they stopping fermentation or starting with an insanely high gravity to start? Uh, I think that they start with a insanely high gravity. I think they. I yeah. highly, highly doubt that he has used any. I don't think yeah, they, it says contains only naturally occurring sulfites. Yeah. So I don't think there's any halting of fermentation here, which well, means that that starting gravity has to be 1,200 or something insane. Yeah. Well, it's either that or like they use some in primary fermentation and then more post-fermentation to help bring it back up. Mm-hmm. That's, but, that's the only thing I can really imagine to it, other than being a high gravity... And being treated really well with your nutrients, your your you know your oxygen nation, a good healthy yeast culture, mm-hmm. you know everything going into it to really start at a high gravity and come down to where yeah, you have you would have to start at a lower gravity. There's no way you could stick a yeast in something that is eleven sixty above and expect them to be healthy and ferment well. I mean, unless he's starting with like a really big starter culture. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's tough to get that going when it's t- when it's the viscosity more than anything, yeah. you know. The grab the, the pressure. I mean, I, I just think that. What I, all I want to know is so, if, Ken, if you happen to see this, don't add fruit in the secondary. They use seventy one B. Because if he uses, that's what I want to know is what yeast was used for that. Yeah, I I would be, uh, John. If you can if you can send us that primary. that interview, I would be curious to see that. That if that they only stick to a single yeast strain, uh, particularly because the the meaderies that I've talked to, commercial meaderies, don't like to tell you what yeast they use. Yeah, it's like the one. Yeah, it would be odd like that Ken Tram is releasing his secrets about yeah. the <laughs> so most you're, sought after mead in the yeah universe. You got that you, expensive even, of a mead, you're probably not gonna. Because I feel it's like not it's even, but much. it's not even that. Like you can like we're putting our recipes out there. Hey, this is what we did. Yeah. How many people are actually getting the exact same outcome that we did? It's probably very, very few. Well, and more than anything, a lot of times it's because they're they're riffing. So like, I I don't know how many Instagram messages I get from someone that's like, oh yeah, I made I made your recipe, recipe. but I used this. Yeah, but I did uh, these ten things differently. (laughs) Why does it taste bad? (laughs) I don't know. I do Start think from the top. this is this is fantastic, and I think for a commercial meadery who can afford to do this, this is very very good. As a yeah, home good. mead maker, this is line. not always. You really done that? Right no, I got literally like. Oh, you got wax like three different. We this all looked at you like you yeah, were dumb. <laughs> <laughs> He's you like, want to drink that? I'm not a big fan of this spit bucket. No, I got like three speckles of. Uh, Wax or something. Like that. This isn't That's always a achievable thing yeah. for home brewers because, I mean, I think if you were to put a a regular price on a glass of this, mm-hmm. and I say regular because this is buying this bottle is abnormal. Yeah, yeah. you go to a restaurant, you buy you food. you know a glass of this to create might be twenty bucks. To make a, a glass of this, like this much, yeah, to yeah. make that use as much fruit as they do. Because yeah. how much fruit they use, and how much I'm sure honey, and they use mm-hmm. high quality honey, and mm-hmm. then the time you have to factor in time as a price. I would say honestly, definitely yeah. not wildflower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I think that it is very very good. It is hard to create in yeah. the exact manner but, that they have done it, but it yeah. is fantastic. That's very good. It is very good, but. In a, I should say, in a... Economical? Economical way, <laughs> yes. You said this bottle, how long they aged this bottle? You said this was a 2018? This, well, because it was released somewhere like February, April, March time frame. Mm-hmm. To start it, at the very least, I imagine it's October. It's still on cheesecake in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so John's going to try and find us the article about uh, Shram using 71B. I'd appreciate that. I'm always, I'm, anytime I can 
und- like know what yeast a commercial brewer is using. Way in front. Uh, <laughs> that's helpful information for me because yeah. it, it helps inform what I'm doing. But no, what I'm wondering is like you know how many of his meads are they aging that long or, or you know before they decide to to go. Well, and when so. you can do this, you can age it for as long as you want. I mean, yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I, this bottle right. sat in storage. Special, you know. I mean, like, how is, long does that aging it sit in a barrel? We had a we had a mead. What, what was it? So we we made a mead one time. It was orange cranberry, and we aged it for six how months. Long? Six months and chocolate raspberry. We decided to taste it one day, and it tastes exactly like chocolate raspberry. It completely changed the the flavor profile. That's weird. It was very weird, but it was delicious. It went from a uh, this means uh, it's okay yeah. to oh my god, this is amazing. Huh. But just we've learned over time that aging, how much it changes everything. It does. A lot. It changes a lot. It's uh, it, it's kind of hard to be that patient sometimes with meats because it's like <laughs> you want to drink it now. You, you want to drink it you now, drink it. but right. sometimes we have it just sit in a closet and we're like, "Hey, let's see what happens," you know, in in eight months. That's I have been again. I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you, every time I watch you, you're, you're like the smallest boy. I'm like, "Come on, man!" <laughs> well, I'm trying to be a, a, economical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a wi- I got a wide glass. You got a you know a little skinny glass. Yeah. Uh, what were we talking about? Aging? Yeah. yeah. I totally <laughs> lost my train of thought. I was like, oh, more meat. Yeah. Excellent. Um, oh, that's why I, I recommend against folks doing one-gallon batches. It's because exactly. Because you have, you end up, if you're doing 750 mils, you end up with four, maybe five bottles. Yeah. And that's it. And yeah. so you want to drink it, and you yeah. drink it, and drink And then six months later, you don't have anything to so, compare against. Like like you... If if it's your first made, yes, start at a gallon. Yeah, that's fine. Understand the process, even if like your first five gallons started, or your first five meads, start at a gallon. Figure out the process, get everything down, get all your ingredients right, get everything put together properly. All right, cool. Granted, not everybody can afford a three gallon carboy or a five gallon carboy, but you can get a five gallon bucket for three bucks at Home yeah. Depot, Walmart, or mm-hmm. Lowe's or whatever, and they're food grade. You know, get it in there. You know, if you have a couple one gallon carboys, break it down, mm-hmm. and then all right, this one I'm gonna age. This one I want to do this, and then you have your drink now or experiment one. Yeah. So, so but, John but, sent me the the YouTube video. Thank you, so John. I'll get it to you guys. Appreciate it, man. So, no, I mean, smart. Like you said, you keep two bottles of everything you make, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you were keeping about the same. Oh uh, yeah, I was keeping right? like well, I had had one that was. I kept two bottles. One was for six months and one was for a year. Mm. I've been just to this. see how it developed. And then he keeps a third bottle. Like, I give him yeah. one of oh, my bottles nice. yeah. and he keeps them in my closet. And then you see you want to do that? I'll give you random, that. <laughs> he, he randomly finds it. Like, he messaged me the other day. He's like, oh, I have <laughs> one of your first bottles. I hit it in a room from, like, I, yeah. three years ago. Nice. Yeah. I would see would be mad at me if I tried to do that. I make so much crap. I yeah. can't even imagine. I'd be storing them in the crawl space. You need to plug your computer in. Oh, yep. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you that. I got it. I got it. Did you just play <laughs> Kid Shrimp with <laughs> Little <laughs> Drop Hop? <laughs> Little Shrimp. Yeah, yeah, you guys said we should do something together. <laughs> so, it's a collab. <laughs> the collaboration. <laughs> So, Sex is long ass be Kid Shram, <laughs> yeah. 2022. Here it comes. Shram, if you're listening. <laughs> so, <laughs> and true Longhouse, or Tex Longhouse Meat Fashion, Skull. Yeah. Skull. <laughs> this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. <laughs>